this episode, the name All Nation. Let's go. Couldn't wait to get off of work to talk about this topic right here. Shout out to the DallasCowboys.com for presenting this information so that we can share it to you all. Thank you all for jumping in. Let's go. Mic check one, two, and three. Let's go. Less is more is what we're going to talk about. Let's go, Cowboy Nation. Less is more. Let's fix it. Appreciate everybody patience. I thank you guys for jumping in. Uh, it is what it is at this time, Cowboy Nation. Uh, this situation in song and dance is all about what it is. Less is more. And of course, you know, when we hear that topic, the first thing that come into mind is this right now, here. So the cocaine's happening. When does that crack come into play for you? <laughs> That's the first thing coming to mind when you hear about the, that type of situation when the, the Jones family is rolling through this thing and they saying, OK, we're we going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out and we're going to get this thing going the best way possible. And that is that is with the less is more philosophy. So, guys, Cowboy Nation, as we go through this whole rigmarole. Stephen Jones had pretty much a semi press conference out there in Florida land. And of course, we can, you know, dive into it. And this is what we do. We're going to dissect this. We're going to go over that. And then we're still going to try to get this party going. Let's go. Let's listen to Stephen Jones. I'm not, not going to waste all your time. We're going to be here for a minute, right? You'd like to make it where the draft can be as pure as possible so to cover yourself. Or, or there's still Cap boy! I feel you. I so. I mean, right now we probably need a kicker. <laughs> I mean, we've got a young guy on the roster. But, uh, you know, obviously we've got to figure out the kicking situation. Then we've got a few other places that we'd like to, you know. What else we like to do? So. Interior offensive line is one. I mean, offensive line in general. Okay. I think it's. Fair to say. Okay. Is offensive line a free agent concept or a draft concept? Both. Both. I mean, I think in order for us to, you know, accomplish what we we talk, you know, whoever just mentioned it, so that we can keep our draft pure, we'd like to get a player or two there, so we're not just feel pushed to go too high and early and often if the right player's not there. What, what about linebacker? Are you, are you good there? Do you need? More numbers. That loud he playing, man. Batteries. Y'all can hear the audio. I said, God, dog, who's flying over there? That's a loud playing. Let me know if y'all can hear the audio. FBI, open up! Let me know. Uh, appreciate everybody as you guys jump in. Be sure to hit the like, share this content. This is going to be my review on everything. Like father, like son. I feel you, fam. I feel you. I feel you. You know, uh, you know, you can, you know, some people consider it in the building. Divine Curse, I mean, J. Ron Curse, a linebacker. So, uh, you know, we don't need as many backers as we used to because we kind of play that hybrid style uh, with our safeties there. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we're not heavy with numbers and uh, certainly could uh, do better there. But I wouldn't say, you know, it's a huge priority before the draft. All right, so he basically said linebackers is not a huge priority before the draft. And for those who are out there thinking, yes, we do play uh, pretty much a lot of nickel is what he meant to say, meaning that it will be two linebackers out there on the field. And on top of that, when it's time to, you know, get into that passing situation, they normally go with the single linebacker look, kick the other guy in inside to play that Leo role. Uh, and it used to be our guy Randy Gregory, but that's a certain different uh, type of topic now because we're going with the approach of less is more. So how valuable will a quote-unquote linebacker be in this particular system? Minimum. 
according to the way we run and operate. As relates to three run, as relates to three linebackers, the Cowboys pretty much got Parsons, and they are with the hopes of Jabril Cox that can really fill in that voided spot. And of course, J. Ron Curse, who's that strong safety, can give you some of that linebackers look. But do we still have an issue at free safety, Cowboy Nation? Y'all, let me know. Post it down below because we do have Malik Hooker, right? And Demonte KZ is still out there on the streets, so I'm quite sure that they waiting for after the draft because I'm quite sure that they might draft the safety. But let's not forget about Izzy Karamu, and let's not forget about uh, Nashawn Wright. I don't think he's a safety, but he's more of a DB on the si- on the corner side. But we'll find out. How's your draft pick? How's last year's draft pick? I mean, how's he coming along in his rehab? At Jabril Cox, yeah. yeah. He's doing uh, doing really well. Feel great about him. Feel great uh, that he fits. You know, he's the right fit uh, for what Dan wants to do defensively. And, right. Uh, you know, think he's coming along great and should be a big plus for us this year. Probably fill right in where Keanu left off. And I uh, think he's got great coverage skills and you no know, good off season with him. Will, you know, will be good for him and uh, really like his upside. Stephen, where are y'all in the overtime discussion here? And what- it just passed. It just passed. It just, I'm probably not supposed to say that, but uh, and what, what will it be? It'll be a two possession. Each team will get a possession, and uh, and postseason only. Okay. Postseason only. Only in the postseason. Only in the postseason. But not to, the two point yeah. conversion aspect. We didn't do the two okay. point conversion. One Obviously, uh, you know, the last team getting the ball. If uh, you know they score a touchdown, and mm-hmm. they know the other team's going to get it back if they tie it. Right. You assume you just lost the coin toss, they might go for two. So yeah. it's, it'll be a strategy thing, though. It'll be interesting. But, uh, you know, I just think everybody watched that unbelievable football game between the Bills and the Chiefs. Mm. I think the thing just cried out for, a, you know, that we consider a second possession, especially in, in overtime. You look at the data and the statistics that, uh, you know, the team went in the toss. I think I forgot the time period, but seven, eight, nine, ten years. You know, yep. ten and two. Whoever wins the toss in the right. playoffs. So, anyway, I, I think it was uh, it passed, and I think it's good to have that change. Postseason only. What was the logic there, and just keeping it for playoffs? Well, the uh, statistics really, believe it or not, are the analytics change quite a bit from regular season. They go from like 55 to you know above you know 80, 85 percent. So, I just think you know you're talking about uh, you know top quarterbacks in the playoffs usually, and. You know, talking about offenses that, you know, this day and time are, are uh, you know, pretty efficient at getting the ball down the field and scoring. Touchdowns. Touchdown. Speaking of regarding your, your free agency philosophy, uh, and it's pretty well established the way you, you – what you believe in, do, do you question yourself? Do you – when it doesn't work well enough to get you where you want to go, does it, does it, do you evaluate it as you go year by year? Yeah, we're always evaluating, you know, how we do and where we can be better. And, uh, you know, right now uh, we feel good about the model. And, uh, you know, obviously you can see from our actions we feel really good about our football team. And, uh, you know, the question becomes, well, if you feel really good about it, then why didn't you go further? And I think that's, right. the, you know, what we got to work through here. But, you know, it's Dan's first year with the defense. I think that defense is only going to get better uh, as, you know, as they play in Dan's uh, defense. So feel good about the defensive side of the ball. And obviously – you know, offensively, uh, you know, we just got to continue to be more efficient. We had a, you know, a top ranked offense, but, uh, you know, we just got to be more efficient, uh, you know, in the big games and the postseason. Right, how are you what, better, what you how you better with be lesser players? Theoretically, our, you know, you, you don't have Amari. Last year you told us this receiving for was as good as any in the league. Right. With, with, with those, fairly the big three, and then you add what Cedric's done. You lose Cedric and Amari. That how hurts. Can you, yeah. I mean, we have to get better. I mean, we're going to have to find ways to, to be better uh, without those two players. And we- man, shout out. Who 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 gave that man that answer there? I mean, I mean that question there I meant to say. Who gave that man that question there? Y'all post his name down below. Uh, he said, how do you get better with lesser players? And uh, somebody says, uh, who who gave him that, that question there? Calvin or Clarence? Somebody said Clarence. Calvin. Oh, my gosh. Good. Good question there. Um, 
You don't get better with lesser. <laughs> you don't. You can only hope. You can only hope. And that's the reality of it. Let me know if I'm too loud. You only can hope at this point. I hope that Michael Gallup can play to the level and the expertise of a Amari Cooper. You know, I hope that even uh, C.D. Lamb can look at this opportunity and say, what I was doing up against the number twos, baby, I'm finna do the same thing against the ones. Bring their names to me because I'm finna cut them up. You know, so that is the situation and the scenario. (laughs) <laughs> so let's get back to it man i uh, appreciate everybody for watching and let me go about right here let's rewind for your mind baby let's rewind how what, you better you how you better with lesser better? players how you better with lesser? theoretically you know you you don't have amari you, last year you told us this receiving core was as good as any in the league right with, with, with those fellas the big three and then you add what cedric has done you lose Cedric and Amari. That How hurts. You- yeah. I mean, we have to get better. I mean, we're going to have to find ways to, to be better uh, without those two players. And we got to have guys uh, step up. Obviously, Gallup missed a lot of time last year. Uh, you know, I think he'll come back uh, recovered. He may miss two or three games there at the beginning, but we're going to have to uh, uh, draft well and have some guys step up, uh, you know, even more so as uh, we move forward. But, you know, unfortunately, you can't keep. Right. We knew we weren't going to be able to keep everybody. and. And there's no question. Amari Cooper's a great football player. Would we love, would we love to keep him? We'd, we'd love to keep him, but we just, uh, you know, didn't have the, the cap space to do both Gallup and Amari. But even <laughs> I want to tell him so bad to leave for it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but come on, shame, shame. Come on, shame. Hey man, let me hit it again, man. Let me hit it again. Shame. Uh. Shame. Shame. All right. Paying Amari Cooper $20 million. It was going to be 22 something like that. Right? It was going to be right around that, 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 that avenue, down that street of paying that man that amount of money. And we can all say to ourselves, if you're not going to use him, you might not. You might as well don't pay him. So it goes back. Is this an indictment on Amari Cooper or is this an indictment on Kellen Moore? Or is this an indictment on Dak Prescott? He's not left in the shadows as well, right? I think the quarterback should say, hey, man, you know, (laughs) these are the facts right here. I think the quarterback should say, hey, man, these are my numbers, man. These are my numbers before before, uh, Amari Cooper arrived. And I, I don't want to go back to that. I, I do like 67 completion percentage. I do like a 102 passer rating. I do like averaging 28.7 a game juxtaposed to 20. Uh, this should be a situation for me, right? So not everybody's left in the dark. <laughs> but the less is more philosophy. You know, it is a situation that the Cowboys going to have to figure out real quick. Will it be feasible? Uh, Siri, what is the less and more philosophy? Can you break that down for me? Hmm? The concept of less is more is based on the value of simplicity and that by having less, you can actually create a life of more. You can still feel secure and happy with less because you are gaining so much more value in your life. Mm. Do you guys agree with what she said? Can you say it again? Let me let me hear her say it again. Uh, what can you repeat this por favor? The concept of less is more is based on the value of simplicity and that by having less, you can actually create a life of more. You can still feel secure and happy with less because you are gaining so much more value in your life. All right, well, let's keep it moving. In defense with Gregory, you wanted to keep Gregory. He was part of... To a point, we wanted to keep Gregory. Okay. To a point, they wanted to keep Gregory. (laughs) Oh, wait, to a point. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Do 
That's what he said to a point, meaning that, hey, if you really wanted him, you'd have figured it out, you know. But to a point, we wanted to keep him. But let's listen to more. And then we made a decision. Uh, you know, we had a plan B, and we started weighing as it came right down to it. And uh, as Jerry told you yesterday, we finally just had to uh, say no. And, you know, we knew if we didn't do that, then we had some options. And turns out we got three really good football players uh, for one. But I wish Randy nothing but the best. He's done an amazing job. Hey, I was watching this uh, documentary of about when to know when people are lying. And this is how they was able to read people. Watch what he said. He going to tug his ear. You know, watch what he said. You know, his documentary broke it down like how to know when people are lying. You know, or they look down, or they look off, you know. But watch this again. Pay close attention. Thank you for tuning in to the Low Nation Film Session. As we take a deeper look at Stephen Jones, as he'd say, he would love to keep Randy Gregory. Plus, he wish him nothing but the best. Let's listen. Cooper's a great football player. Would we love Would we love to keep him? Would We'd love to keep him, but we just, uh, you know, didn't have the, the cap space to do both Gallup and Amari. But even with, in, in defense with Gregory, you wanted to keep Gregory. He was part of? To a point, we wanted to keep Gregory. Okay. And then we made a decision. Uh, you know, we had a plan B, and we started weighing as it came right down to it. And uh, as Jerry told you yesterday, we finally just had to uh, say no, and, you know, we knew. Watch what he said. didn't do that, then we had some options. And turns out we got three really good football players. Uh, for one, but I wish Randy nothing but the best. He's done an amazing <laughs> job. Uh, hey, y'all saw the ear. I wish him nothing. He got to slow down on the nothing but the best. You know, he got he got to slow it down just a little bit. Come on, come on, come on, Steven. You know, slow it down just a little bit. But we, we, let, let's listen to it one more time. Look, hey, thank you for tuning in to the Law Nation Film Session. As we take a deeper look at the shades, the glasses, the hair, the tug of the ear. Oh, that's a key indicator that... He don't really mean that, but he's saying that. Yesterday, we finally just had to uh, say no, and you know we knew if we didn't do that, then we had some options. And turns out we got three really good football players uh, for one. But I wish Randy nothing but the best. He's done an amazing job uh, with his journey, and uh, if anyone deserves <laughs> to uh, have a big contract, uh, I'm happy for him. But you know, at the same time. You know, we're excited about a young Dorrance Armstrong and uh, what Fowler has <laughs> got great experience with Fowler. Uh, and loved him watch it a lot. Watch it a lot. Pay attention. Watch. Three really good football players uh, for one. But I wish Randy nothing but the best. He's done an amazing <laughs> job uh, with his journey. And uh, if anyone deserves to uh, have a big contract, uh, I'm happy for him. But, you know, at the same time, you know, we're excited about a young Dorrance Armstrong and uh, what Fowler did. He's got great experience with Fowler and, <laughs> and loved him in Atlanta and paid him. And uh, in Atlanta there, didn't get to, you know, stay long enough to really work with him. But he was fired up about having him and think he can do some dynamic things as well. And then, of course, you throw Leighton in there for, the set. you know, in that same cap space. Uh, you know, we just think, you know, we feel comfortable with where we ended up there. No concerns. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me turn off my uh, FBI mindset and my governmental thoughts on this thing since Joseph said, Law, you reach it, man, you know. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we'll find out whether or not less is more will work, uh, Joseph, and we will figure it out, you know, uh, how all of this stuff can work its way around. But let's listen to this one right here. I hope Doc is much better than the second half of the season. I believe he is, and that can help make up for the front office BS. This is from B. Wee. Um, I'm on record saying, and I appreciate you for the donation there, B. Wee. I, I'm on record saying that this team is capable of winning 10-plus games. And I think that this team will win at least 10 games, just based off of – Still, you got a quarterback. You still have, uh, uh, of course, you don't have Amari Cooper, but you have C.D. Lamb. You brought back Dalton Schultz. And look at it. We got six games within our division. Not saying that the Eagles, Washington, Commodes, oh, I'm sorry, the Commanders, and the Giants will be that much of a difference as well. I don't think that they moved the needle that much. So I think that we can at least find a way to win 10 games or more. And – 
that's just my philosophy and thoughts. Uh, we still, regardless of what we say about this and that, the defense, the defense is going to be better. <laughs> I know we got rid of Randy Gregory, right? We got Dorrance Armstrong, and we do have Dante Fowler, right? But I'm only saying this with this tongue, and I'm not saying it tongue-in-cheek or putting lipstick on the pig. You got Dan Quinn, and I believe that Dan Quinn, Parsons, D-Law, and as well as Trayvon Diggs, and hopefully – Hopefully, we see the growth aspect of whoever we draft and Kevin Joseph. I think this defense will still be better. Just We just have to wait and see. My only uh, problem is, is why we just don't go out there to improve it even more. You see, there's levels to this. It's a situation where you can be good. It's a situation where you can improve your good to be better. And it's a situation that you can improve your better to be great. But we're hovering right at good and better, basically. And that's just that's just my thoughts on it. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. The Dallas Cowboys, the way we look at this thing from the outside looking in, we have no choice but to ride the wave going up and down, up and down. But it is what it is. Dan Quinn better be magic. Yes, yeah, Sam. Now, that is the situation. That is the situation. Dan Quinn got to be. He got to be on point. He flat out do. But whereas we looking at it from the outside looking in, it's like, dog, you look like dog, man. You relying on Jabril Cox? We don't know. But Jabril Cox can be dang on good for us for the 2022 season. But we don't know. Oh, you relying on Dorrance Armstrong, D.A.? We don't. No, but we do know from his past experience that the five sacks that he got, three were because of the other guys. Two was because of the fact, yeah, he got it naturally from that aspect of it. Go back and watch the tape. Now, Dante Fowler, who Dan Quinn liked coming out of high school when he was going straight to college, he recruited him, right? He was trying to get him. And I think he did, right? And then he went off and got, you know, drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then on top of that, from the Jacksonville Jaguars, he went on to Atlanta Falcons because Dan Quinn, he really liked Dante Fowler. So that is the unknown. We don't know. It's a lot of ifs. <laughs> Endurance ain't it. This is from uh, Esteban. Yeah, and I and I, I give you that. <laughs> we, we all know that if you're going to go into the 2022 season with Doris Armstrong as your starting uh, edge rusher, you have to say, man, come on, man. You can't sell that to us. But that's why we was banging on the table for Chandler Jones. That's why we was banging on the table for Zadarius Smith. That's why we were saying, hey, I mean, even at this point, hey, what about Jadavion, right? But it is what it is. Let me see what Michael have to say. Appreciate you for the donation. If less is more, why did we need Charles Haley or Prime Time? <laughs> but no, 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 no. It's for this philosophy. <laughs> well, I come here to tell y'all beautiful people that's watching. There, there are only a spoonful of coaches. Um, hold on, hold on, before I go to that point. Leon, great point. Leon, let me, let me scroll down. Uh, I need a urine sample from Law if you think this defense will be better presently. Uh, Leon Lewis, no, not as of March the 30th. We got to wait to the draft. All right? Put it like this. What this defense would have been better without Michael Parsons. Last year, if we were having this same conversation without Parsons, unseeing Parsons playing for this particular team, and I made the same statement, you would have been saying, Law, you know, you know, you must be. You must be out of your goddamn mind. Right? But we had to wait till after the draft. And after the draft, I was literally telling everybody, hey, this defense is going to be better. 
Even though we were historically bad, we got Dan Quinn. And on top of that, with the draft pieces that we got, we're going to have to rely on the offense first. We're going to have to rely on the offense first. And then on the latter end of the season, the defense will show up and show out. I, you guys can go back and rewind the tape. I had I said that to a degree where there was one guy, I think his name was Demetrius Alexander, cursed me out all offseason and, and, and gets, just kept getting kicked out of the chat or what have you by the Bermods and sent me paragraph lint full saying, Law, you out of your god dog on mine because this defense will, 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 will start off on fire. They would not start off slow. They would do this. They would do that. And I said, no, man, it's going to take time. Because whenever you have a young team and young players, it takes time for the defense to get together. Offense can always jump like this. But defense normally takes time to blend. Even when you think about the Super Bowl champions of the Seattle Seahawks, Legion of Boom, they didn't go undefeated. They didn't go undefeated. They lost some games. But they started gelling and getting hot toward the latter part of the year. And then they would start whipping butts and taking no names, right? The same could be said about the Ravens. The same could be said about the uh, 2001 Buccaneers, right? They didn't go undefeated. About the pass rush, though, I mean, the numbers suggest that even though Gregory didn't have a lot of sacks, he still had more than Fowler has produced the last couple of years. Well, he's, he's got more, but not by a lot. I mean, Armstrong's got right. To, if you look at his production last year versus Randy's, you know, very similar. So, uh, you know, we get Randy and Fowler, and you put those together, then maybe a little more production there. So Now, that is where I disagree. Shame. 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 <laughs> All right, so I go back to telling you guys this right here. With what Doran Doran Armstrong had last season, last season, I want you guys to go back and look at the all 22 and look at his sacks. He got majority of those sacks against the Atlanta. He got one against the Atlanta Falcons game. You know, they could have rolled me out there. I'm near 40, and I I probably would have got to Matt Ryan, (laughs) especially in that game because we beaten the heck out of him. And then on top of that, with the Washington football team, we was beating the mess out of them, and Doris Armstrong got him a sack there. The other sack that he got in that Arizona Cardinals game, that was due to Randy Gregory. That's three right there that I'm going off the top of my recall. But it is what it is. Now, far as the if part of it, Fowler. Fowler is the wild card. We don't know. We definitely don't know. So that's what we have to wait and see. And plus, how are you going to placate this if you go into this draft and you draft another edge rusher, right? Like how that split is going to work. Let's go. Let's get this thing going the best way possible, Cowboy Nation. Appreciate you. Uh, Wade, appreciate you, let's say. Rely on a fence with no offensive line. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, I said we, we're going to have to rely on the offense and allow the defense to catch up. Last year, think about this. The offense pretty much was thought to be humming. And matter of fact, let's be, let me be perfectly clear with this. The Dallas Cowboys finished the season with the number one offense in the National Football League whether it be efficiency levels that you're having issues and troubles with, number one in to- total point score and number one in total offense, numbers, the field. How do you combat that? It's cool. How do you combat that? Improve your defense. Improve your defense. Look, I'm not saying that we are the 2000 Ravens or we will be that. But let's just look at the core philosophy. You get big boys inside. You create alleyways and lanes for Ray Ray to run freely, right? Big Tony, Sarah, Goose, Sam Adams, and all of those big boys that was up front. 
So what I'm saying is that for the 2022 season, I don't know what this offense is going to look like, even though we were number one last year. We got a lot of holes on the front five. So where is our strength at? Where will it be? I presume, I, I perceive that this defensive philosophy will be the strength. I think that this defense will be better. Now, would the defense be better than the offense? That's, that, that's a question of a different day. We will have to wait until after the, dra- after the draft. We do. That's, the, that's just the equal. That, that's just what it is. BS equal BS. I feel you, him and I. <laughs> but that just, that there's impossible for us to say right now, March the 30th, that we know that this defense or this offense would be at the same situation where we were last year. But we can project to say right now that the defensive with the defensive situation with Dan Quinn and what he did is projected to be better than what they did last season. That's all I can say on that. I think that Trayvon Diggs going into the third year would be better than what he did in his second year. I, I absolutely think that with Jabril Cox, if he's healthy, that he's he's going to be better than Keanu Neal. Oh, excuse me, Parsons, I think that he's going to be better than what he was last year. Last year, Parsons was guessing. Now he's going to run around free. And the whole aspect of Kelvin Joseph starting, if he's going to start over Anthony Brown, then we got to say that, man, come on. He's projected to be better than him. But the offense, we don't know. How many holes we have on the front five, Cowboy Nation? And what we're going to do now with James Washington, uh, Michael Gallup, he's out for three. He said two to three, you might as well say four weeks. It's going to take him a week to get ready back in football mental mind shape, right? So that's how complex this thing is. Central was the terminology in Gregory's contract to the, to the breakup. Three holes. Yeah, appreciate uh, I appreciate you. Think so I, I just think people made, you know, from his side, he made some difficult decisions that, you know, were important to him and his agent. And we had to make some decisions that were important to us, but we weren't asking him to do anything we didn't ask any other uh, player to do. And, you know, we were willing to work through some things with him. And he just made the decision ultimately uh, with where our offer was versus where Denver was to go with Denver. And we respect that. Do you wish the- All right, appreciate you. Uh, we're going to go through that too. Uh, here we go with Mark. We play in the worst division and had the second easiest schedule. I think that's more the reason for our number one O. When we played better teams, we fell behind. We put up 30 points on the uh, Raiders, right? And the the, the Denver Broncos, uh, as, as much as we, we they wasn't like the, the best of the best team, they, they beat the hell out of us, right, physically. And we kind of shot ourselves in the foot because we gave them momentum by going for it. <laughs> on fourth down and they said yeah we got them right where we want them um but <clears throat> what other game that we were blown out in you know uh we were right into the thick of it with the 49ers right all right guys let me know like how many games we lost oh we lost five in the regular season so how many games did we got blown out of like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they was the, the defending Super Bowl champs. We put up good numbers against them. I, I'm trying to figure out, but I feel what you're saying about the worst division. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, man, I think Green Bay Packers, you know, they, their division was worse than ours, but they're not going to get that type of uh, media pressure. I think that historically speaking, collectively, that the Dallas Cowboys division, the NFC East, is dog sure the most competitive division in the National Football League. Now we will find out now in the AFC, was it West, that all of that stuff is going on over there. But nobody got more Super Bowls than our division and play each other rough and rugged. Matter of fact, by the Cowboys alone, got to fly from Dallas, Texas, all the way to the East Coast. Look, ain't nothing East in Texas. Ain't nothing East about being in Texas. And we play in the East Division. You know that That's kind of bizarre in its own, right? 
all every every team in our division got a ring. Nobody else can say that. But we always look to say, hey, and all of the stuff that we talk about with our particular team, the Green Bay Packers only won one more game than us. Only won one. One more than us. And they was number one seed. Shout out to you, K-Wade. Appreciate you for the 200 stars. And I know that that's an unpopular opinion because people are so easy and people are so gullible to say, hey, the NFC East is actually the NFC least. No, that's not the case, nor the scenario. They can't provide evidence that their division got more rings than us, than ours, or been to the championship or the Super Bowl more than our division. But it is what it is. We get hit with that uh, media stuff of we have the worst division in the National Football League. Hi, Law. I am about and about. I pray everyone is well. I am always here to support the nation. Appreciate you, Sadiq. Well, thank you so much for your love and adulation. Thank you. Appreciate you. Cowboys champ, appreciate you. This team will be the laughing stock of the NFL until the Joneses stop wearing their egos on the sleeves and hire a real GM. Whenever uh, I appreciate you, Cowboys champs, uh, I appreciate you. But whenever I say that, you know, it goes into one ear and out the other. You know, um, I, I had somebody to bring up. Well, name me another <laughs> GM they have. Three Super Bowls in twenty. Well, within the last, outside of the Patriots, name me another GM that had three Super Bowls. Or blah 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 blah. But we can clearly see that the three Super Bowls came from Jimmy Johnson, right? Even if you want to give credit to Barry Switzer, those were still Jimmy Johnson philosophy and thinking of players. They thought like Jimmy Johnson, and we've been chasing the ghost who's still alive, Jimmy Johnson. We've been chasing that. We've been chasing that whole mindset. But the Jones family, yes, they do have big egos. I, I call it edging God out because that man with the glasses on his head, he think and know that he can say to himself, hey, we got it the way we got it because we are risk takers. And I'm the calculated one. and I'm smarter than you. I'm a billionaire with the B. So I'm not going to listen to anybody else beneath me. And that's just how it goes, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, shout out to you, Sadiqa, again. You didn't gave two. Hi, Law. I am about and about. I pray everyone is well. I am always here to support the nation. Appreciate you, Sadiqa. Uh, appreciate you. I listen to more of this guy. Jimmy was the blueprint just from Jay Lombardi. You're right. The departure was handled differently from a public standpoint with what seemed like a flip-flop, yet the team was tweeting it out. And how much more... Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Uh, wait a minute, he said, you must be out your mind if you think this team can win 10 wins or better. All right. What do you suggest? Who, who do you think... Who do you think... Is going to get the ten get to the ten wins in this division, hmm? Because even when you say I'm out of my mind, shouldn't it be said similar to those who say that the Cowboys are going to finish below 500 every year, and when we start playing, they continue to move the goalposts? No other no other team got that type of burden on them. But the Cowboys truly do. <laughs> Every year, Cowboys would be below 500. And then before they added the extra game, the Cowboys would be nothing more, nothing more than 8-8. Eight and eight. And all of that been lies. All of it. Even with a quarterback that they say that they couldn't hit water if he fell off a boat. Hmm? <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. The quarterback literally had only one losing season, and that because he got injured. Hmm? We well, got Parcells. I feel you on that. Often does that happen in your negotiations? Behind Eagles hit 11 wins. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I think usually our, our negotiations are pretty smooth. I mean, every now and then you have a bumpy one. 
And, but that's part of the business. I, I bet if you talk to 32 teams, they've all had some, you know, they've had one or two that stand out as, well, that was, you know, not necessarily the norm, but, uh, you know, you work through it. I mean, the, the big thing for me is we think so much of Randy and uh, what he's accomplished and wish him nothing but the best. And, uh, you know, we've got to move forward uh, with what we decided to do and feel good about it. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, we have another super chat. Appreciate you, Illmatic. The AI Do speech. you believe that Jimmy Johnson did us like Miss Kale in the color purple? Until you do right by me, peace sign, curse fingers. <laughs> um, sometimes when you, you can't, this is the thing. Karma is real, right? And you reap what you sow. I believe in those things. Regardless, the universe responds to certain ways that you move. Energy is energy. Power is power, regardless of who possesses it, whether it's an evil person or the good person. Uh, I, I will never forget, uh, and I'm not going to go that far into it, but I, I just believe that, you know, for, for the Jones family to say, hey, we want to do what's best by the fans, by playing this settlement for whatever it was with the Borearism, right? Right, whatever Rich Dalrymple did, and what all of the cheerleaders and all of this stuff, and and these sorts of things. He said it's better to do what's best by the fans and also best by whoever and all that was involved. Right? Clearly, he didn't want that to leak out. Well, don't you think to counter that? You, don't you think what would be best by the fans is for those? who rooted for Jimmy Johnson, who rooted uh, for this team and, and actually got a chance to see Troy Aikman and Emmett and the playmaker and all of those boys win games and win Super Bowls. Wouldn't it be best to think that those people should be able to look up at the ring of honor and see Jimmy Johnson name there as well? Right. The coach that coached the guys that's in the hall of fame, right? The coach that really put those guys on the map. You would think, that naturally, that you can look up and tell people, hey, Jimmy Johnson was a part of that. Jimmy Johnson was, the, was a part of the reason why the Cowboys were able to get to those glory days in the 90s. But it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, but appreciate you, Illmatic. What are your biggest needs for the draft? I think we need to pick good football players. But, uh Help us win and make plays. I mean, obviously, that's a good, good answer. Uh, you know, we did a good job with that with Micah last year. I mean, you can't think that's going to happen. Right. You know, year in and year out. But you can, you know, you have some really good football players. But we feel good about our football team. But obviously, we're going to be looking for some really good football players. We got nine picks. We got uh, four fives, and uh, you know, we got to make you know those early picks. Uh, you know, we're going to have some, some great opportunities. This, draft is very deep lots of numbers in this draft and it's a good time to you know have nine picks so there's no position this has we need to shore up here i mean as we go we'll we'll see uh that boy has a good question i mean you, you bring <laughs> up a great one i mean we lost uh, <laughs> uh two really good receivers uh in amari and and said so obviously uh you know we signed james washington which is good uh we really thought a lot of him coming out of oklahoma state and uh you know, he played there in Pittsburgh and made some big plays for them. But uh, certainly, uh, you know, we're looking to, you know, find some people who can make plays. And, you know, that receiver uh, situation certainly jumps out. I mean, we've got Dalton and, uh, you know, unfortunately, Blake uh, has had a tough deal medically in terms of uh, his journey uh, in the league. So, you know, you want to, in this league, you'd like to have, you know, this day and time with the matchups. You'd love to have more than just one tight end. And, and we mentioned the offensive line is important. I thought I thought we have done a really good job on the defensive side of the ball of not having a lot of uh, major issues there. Stephen, can you give? Doesn't mean we wouldn't pick a, a great defensive player though. Given the offensive line <laughs> concern, good way to tie it up. Explain how how rapidly you guys soured on Lyle Collins and why. I don't think sour is the right word. Uh, I, I just think you know you have to make tough decisions, and you know obviously Terrence Steele played into that. Uh, what we think he can be. Uh, the way he goes about his business, the way he's played, uh, his air's up. He's only going to get better. And, you know, when you start having to make some 
uh, decisions from a business standpoint, uh, you know, that was one that uh, we just felt uh, we needed to make. But there's no one soured on Lyell. I mean, we. Man, bull sugar, man. All, now, the next follow up question should be all right, so why did you let him go to the market for $10 million and leaving you a hole right there at guard when you have a guy that got positional flex that can be kicked inside? Or why did you hold his feet to the fire to the other teams? So that if you're going to get rid of him, let's not broadcast it out to the world, right? So that now there will be a situation, a trade scenario. Low K, you could literally, you could have at least waited to after the draft because you're going to cut him in June anyway. You actually, John Stephen Jones, literally gave the Cincinnati Bengals a favor. Why? Because you fool around. You fool around and got rid of one of your weapons. You could have used him as a draft pawn, basically. You knowing that you're going to get rid of him, you could have went into the draft because you're not doing anything with the $10 million. Y'all hear me out. He's not doing anything with the $10 million, right? You don't have to cut him. You don't have to cut him to June 1st. You don't have to cut him to June 1st. And my, and my knowledge you drafted before Joan. The Cincinnati Bengals are picking after you, right? You could have held them all the way to the draft and literally said, hey, you guys still, look, you look at all of these guards, look at all of these guards and tackles going off the board. We got a proposition for you right now. We will flat out give you Lyle Collins to be your starting tackle. All you got to do is come up out of that pick. I guarantee you, they would look left, look right, and said, "You know what? All of the all of the guards and tackles are gone right about now. We'll do it. But you give them away. That's giving away arsenal. It's giving away weapons. That's not a wise move. Let me know where I'm wrong." Let me know where I'm wrong. You literally could have just held on to him. Held, held on. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, thank a lot of Lyle. Traditionally, you've kind of, you've invested more on the offensive side of the ball through the years as far as your big contacts. This year, Cooper gone, Collins. Is, is there a little shift, a recognition of this is a better young defense than you've had in a while, and you're going to have to pay a couple of these guys down the road? And I guess it's a little more balanced in your in your distribution to right. this team than what you've had lately. You know, I think that I always look at it, David, as an opportunity. Is uh, you know, you get an opportunity to draft players uh, that happen to be the best player on your board. I mean, when all right. So look, 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 guys, man. You know that that, that little whole segment made me mad. But <clears throat> here's what I got right here. Here we got right here. We're going to ask Siri, what happened to the owner? What did the owner say to Carson Wentz after he was gone? Siri, can you answer that for me? Colts owner Jim Ursaritz, Carson Wentz following trade to Washington. Hmm. Okay. And he did that after the trade. He rips him after. Why? Because he wanted to get value. Huh? He wanted to get value, right? It's safe to say the Jim Irsay wasn't a fan of the Carson Wentz era in Indy. After staying relatively quiet following Wentz's trade to Washington, Irsay is becoming vocal about his displeasure with how things turned out, calling the whole thing a mistake. Mm. Now, was that before or after? Cowboy Nation, can y'all let me know? Because that is the reality of it. Can, can you say that again? Can you hear? Because I, I need to hear it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I really need to hear the full statement, lady. I, I, I got time. Uh, uh, Siri, can you repeat this? Por favor. All of it. Colts owner Jim Ursaritz Carson Wentz following trade to Washington. It's safe to say the Jim Ursay wasn't a fan of the Carson Wentz era in Indy. 
After staying relatively quiet following Wentz's trade to Washington, Ursay is becoming vocal about his displeasure with how things turned out, calling the whole thing a mistake. Mm. Do you have uh, do you have the the actual quotes that he said? Siri, what are the quotes of Ursay about Carson Wentz? I'm yelling at her. I think the worst thing you can do is have a mistake and try to keep living with it going forward, Ursay said Tuesday via to the Indianapolis Star. For us, it was something we had to move away from as a franchise. It was very obvious. Mm. <sighs> Ursay <laughs> he was doing his magic, right? <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. All right, so we got another super chat. Uh, shout out to Ken Art. Let's read this one out, Siri. If we can't pass the first round of the playoffs, it doesn't matter what our record is. Right now, seems like we don't even have a head coach. Mm. Uh. <clears throat> uh. Ken Art, I, hey, you're right. We post win the playoffs, man. You get in the playoffs. Look, the name of the game would be this right here. And I, I agree with you, uh, Ken Art, on that. The name of the game is getting to the playoff, regardless of what your record is. Once you're in a dance, it's time for you to make moves from there. You will have to win, regardless, especially if you have a home game. That's what you fight for, getting that home game and then do something from there. Now, reports came out of the Cowboys locker room uh, from the head coach, by the way, that the players were timid. It seems at prayer that they was nervous and he didn't give any answer to what he did to calm them down, to give them a speech, to make sure that they want to run through a wall or what have you, or said that this particular guy rallied everyone up and said, hey, let's get this thing going. So I agree with that. But what coach is doing right now? Coach knows that his back is against the wall, and that is why he's down here in Alabama. You know, uh, I know you guys can't see. Let me see if I can get rid of this part right quick. That's why he's down there in Alabama. That's Coach right there, Mike McCarthy. He's down there in Alabama land, and he's looking at the uh, the guys from the Bama team. If you roll tide right now, let me know in the comment box. Roll tide, right? <laughs> but I feel y'all. Let's listen to more of what they have to say. When we drafted Zach Martin. We had three great defensive players. We thought we were going to get one of those guys ahead of Zach Martin. Well, we ended up getting Zach Martin, and he turns out to be a great player. So rather than paying one of those defensive guys four years from that standpoint, it ended up being Zach Martin. Same thing with Travis Frederick, same thing with Tyron Smith. Uh, you know, as you draft guys like that, I mean, obviously we're looking at Diggs, we're looking at Micah, looking at players like that. Hook them, baby. I see you. <laughs> you hope that they're two. Uh, contract plus guys and so you know you at the end of the day it's it's kind of what comes your way in, in terms of uh, where your resources go and then where you gotta uh, kind of make things work so, so it's more I'm, dependent on the individual talent that you have on the side of the at ball the point versus, at that point is it pretty encouraging how CD has developed thus far that despite all the production that he has there's still ways that he can really fine tune his game and get mm -hmm. that much better. I do. I think he'll only get better. Uh, True that. I, mean, I, I just think he's he's a great competitor. Uh, right. He does he really wants to be the best? Uh, I think you know this creates an opportunity for him to really step up. Not having Amari now. I mean, Amari was a veteran. He was a good guy in the room for those guys. He was the leader. I think this is going to allow allow these guys to step up. And uh, rather than doing it with three, you might do it with two plus some other guys. But uh, I think this is a great opportunity for Sed to step up. Do you see this as a – I mean, for Sed, yeah, for, yeah. for CD. CD, you, you know, said Sed. You, you know, obviously last year's <laughs> draft was a defensive draft. Uh, could this have been an offensive draft? Obviously, if a great pass rush or somebody falls. But could BPA, you, man. The, yeah, that's the hard part. I mean, you I just mentioned to yeah. you probably where we got some – you know, where you – could use more input after you said right, we right. lose Amari, you lose, you lose Sed, you lose Connor, yeah. uh, Connor Williams. I mean, you lose. Uh, you know, we thought Blake Jarwin was going to be around here for five, you know, four or five years, and unfortunately, uh, you know, the injury uh, situation got to him. So, you know, I've already mentioned that. You know, those are some of the areas because we 
do have quite a bit of depth in the defensive front with what we did in free agency. We got Leighton back, uh, you know, there at the linebacker spot. We got, you know, the safeties we wanted back, and we got a good situation there at corner. So, uh, you know, you never say, hey, we're only focused right. on offense. But if, you know, if the defensive guy's sitting there, and we've got him rated a lot higher than the other guys. And you, you go with the, the highest rated. We've had our success. It's not being pigeonholed to taking one particular thing. You, have a- you know what? You know what the craziest thing about all of this? It seems as if, though, we collectively watch this particular guy grow, right, as it relates to front office work <laughs> and go through his ups and downs, downs and ups, we literally watched this man grow, and hopefully, man, um, we go with BPA approach for the 2022 season. If the Cowboys have Trey Burks higher than Kennard, right, and all of the offensive linemen guys are gone, and it's a situation where is do you go with Kennard or do you go with Traylon Burks, you, you, we hope that they say, man, you know, I get it. We need offensive line help. But, man, we got to go with the BPA approach. Unless, hear me out, this is the only option. Kenner, yeah, I think that's how you said the name. Kenner, Alex, yeah. I'm, this is just only, this is only, hear me out, <laughs> depending on their board. Right? We only hope that they, at least, if they do do something crazy, that they trade down and get multiple draft picks. But come on. But they shouldn't reach. I cannot take Kennard in the first. Draft Zion or Kenyon. Kenyon Green. This is uh, Lopez. Basically, yeah. But I'm saying... That if they draft needs, let's let's go back because there's no possibility in my mind <laughs> is when they looked at that Taco Charlton, that they looked at the tape that we looked at, and they said, you know what, Tacos would be better than TJ. You know, there's no way, man, ain't no way. If so, man, we all need to change our jobs, right? <laughs> Never reach Jay Lombardi. Yeah, that's the message. Always BPA in the first. Jackie Price, get the picture, right? And – after the first, you know, maybe look, I would go BPA all the way to the strength, to the strengths of knocking at third round. And then after the third round, you can start saying, okay, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that. Because tags should be like everywhere at that point. I digress. Never reached though. A read yet on you mentioned the depth of the draft class. Do you have a read yet on positions where that could really benefit you in this class? I'm sorry, say that again. Do you have a read yet on, on which positions in this class are deep enough that could benefit you just in terms of depth of the position? Well, there's always receivers. I mean the college game. I mean it's a, yeah. <laughs> it's very conducive. We go on trailing burst. So I bet you. Be, you know, it's gonna be Chris Olave the receiver position. or trailing Burks. Like, uh, this draft's pretty deep in the uh, defensive front. Uh, so, you know, never hurts to add to your defensive front. And then, uh, you know, tight ends, it's a, a tougher position to find because of the, of the college game, but certainly they're out there. And then the offensive front, you know, there's always uh, some offensive linemen, but the way they play the college game, you got, uh, you know, you got to project a little bit and, and work through uh, where that's going to be. So, uh, but the big thing is there's a big number up between the, the, the super the super seniors, the COVID seniors, if you will, that have played six years. I mean, there's a bigger number of people in the draft than there's, than there's ever been. So it's, a, I think, a great opportunity to find players out there. Our guys, you know, Will and his staff and the coaches are certainly do, doing their work to get prepared for the draft. And, uh, you know, I think we've got a great opportunity. Why did, why did the organization decide um, it was better suited for Mike McCarthy not to come here and focus on the draft? And, and what does he bring to the draft room? That boy be asking some fire questions. Now, I, I want to know whether or not was this the organization thought track or was it Mike McCarthy thought track. So let, let me listen to what he got to say. Well, Mike uh, has been around a lot of great football players. I, I, we've always been inclusive of our coaches mm-hmm. in the evaluation process. And you've got to, which I think is one of Will's strongest suits, is getting a vision for what 
Mike and Kellen want to do on offense, for what Mike and Dan want to do on defense. I think, uh, you know, they got a vision for how they can fit in to, uh, how we want to play football. And so uh, uh, we've always involved uh, coaches uh, in the evaluation process. And then in general, just Mike, you know, working on uh, the staff with his, uh, with his coaches, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's important too. And he felt like that was uh, the best use of his time. Yes, Mike felt that it was the best use of his time, not the organization. So, Mike, I'm, I'm glad I, I listened closely to that. And I feel you, Charlie. I feel you, Charlie, uh, on that uh, other stance right here, operating within free agents. Yeah, we, we only deal with what they can go out there and get, and that makes us right in the middle of the road with the uh, free agent picks. Like, like I said before, we know what we're going to do and we know we can be better. And we relied on Dan Quinn and we relied on Will McClay to get some things going uh, as far as the free agent guys and, uh, and on the defensive side. But I'm glad that Mike McCarthy, he's saying, looking at this thing, I value my time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go out here and do, do it with my own eyes. I'm going to see who I like and try to have my influence on said player, you know, versus waiting to hear it from Dan Quinn, who who might can take my spot, or Will McClay, who might be, uh, you know, seeing eye to eye different from me, you know, see deep things different from me. So, yeah. And, you know, we had a very small agenda from a competition standpoint. Okay. Obviously, I'm very involved on the committee and keeping right. very abreast and, and I communicate all the time on, uh, what we're looking at from a rural standpoint, but uh, you know, the, that's one of the shortest competition uh, agendas I think since right. I've been on the committee, and Jerry said since he's been on the committee. So, you know, I just don't know that it was, uh, you know, we didn't have a major problem with uh, him choosing to uh, stay back and work with the coaches and do some uh, draft work. You have until mid July. You have until mid mid July to sign Dalton to a multi-year deal. Otherwise, he'll play under the franchise tag. Do you anticipate a strong push before then to get a long-term deal done, or are you pretty yeah. comfortable with the idea? Of we what just uh, we got to see kind of where we end up with everything, uh, you know, from an overall standpoint. But obviously, you know, the fact we franchise Dalton tells you all you need to know about what we think about him. So we just kind of see how that progresses. Stephen, what do you? Shoot, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. If the Cowboys fool around and get like a Isaiah Likely or Greg Dolchik. How you say that man's name from UCLA? Whatever that guy's name, Greg. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? If they fool around and get any of those guys, or let's say Ferguson, or you guys name me another tight end uh, that can come in and be like, hey, Schultz, we're going to bite the bullet and just go ahead and play you on that franchise tag, which I disagree that they should do. Show's not going anywhere. Show's not getting a deal. Yeah, T Mac, I don't see a possibility for Schultz to get a deal if you got Isaiah Likely and you got, you know, um any of the Doshik. How you say that name? <laughs> Let me see if uh if if my lady can say that word, the you know, you know, you know, the pronunciations of that word there. Uh all right. See if she can say it. Come on. Delsich. Dosich. Say it again, lady. Say it again. Delsich. Delsich. First name, Greg, right? Siri say his whole name. Greg Delsich. Dosich. She she speaks good. Mm. Trey McBride. Yeah, that would be nice. Um Mike McCarthy looking at a six round draft pick. Yeah, man. Uh quarterback? Yeah. They had another guy that he wrote in Zeppi or ZP. Yeah. Mike McCarthy is looking for a sixth round QB. <laughs> we got Benjamin Danucci. <laughs> uh, Mike McCarthy is known for drafting a quarterback every year. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. What do you need from a center for Dak to be able to play at his highest level? And did you get that last year? I think uh, you can always be better. I think, uh, obviously, uh, Baidaz is young. And uh, but uh, he's driven to 
uh, to you know be a great player, and I think you can always have improvement, uh, especially when you're eliminated in the first round of the playoffs when you <laughs> felt like your team was better than that. Then you know we can have improvements in all areas, but uh, uh, certainly uh, I know he'll work to be better, and we'll By see what we end up from a personnel standpoint. Uh, you know, in terms of what the competition will be there. So, uh, you know, it's always great. Uh, never talked to a coach who said the more depth and uh, more competitive situations you can have make you a much better football team. Mm. I think Mike was saying this morning that that uh, normally there's maybe around 150, 160 with draft grades, and you're looking at projecting. Maybe David Bell 20, is pretty good. Yep. Just are, those, are those kind of the, the – round numbers you're kind of looking at? That's here. what uh, I've gone over with Will, yes. Those would be good round numbers, and of course that's going to make us be even more, hopefully, really drill down even deeper to try to, you know, keep those numbers where you historically would have them, but we also got to acknowledge if there's, you know, football players that deserve to be on the board, then you got to acknowledge that as well. So it'll be interesting how we sort through that. Now, <clears throat> my thoughts on this Cowboy Nation, all nine of those draft picks, I'm going to say it again, and, and you guys can hate me for it, but I just feel like all nine of them, they won't play. And when I said the same thing last year, I had all type of people want to shank me with the butter knife and everything and uh, try to, you know, uh, say, no, nah, law, you're wrong, you're lying, man, you know. And all I can tell them is that all nine of these guys in this draft pick, would not start. Hell, our second round draft pick didn't start. So what would be wise for the Cowboys to package some of these picks together, move up in the draft, and get somebody that's quality over quantity. Who agree? He's talked about less is more anyway, right? Wouldn't quality be better over quantity? Less is more in this draft. Would that be a situation and scenario? Uh-huh. Get your damn act together. I don't yeah. like your attitude. Come on, Jerry. Come on. <laughs> hey, Gerald, question about what the road ahead looks like now in terms of once you get back to the star, what's the process like of just meetings and everything and leading up to the draft? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is obviously we're, you know, back to the old famous line, player acquisitions, 365. 365. We're going to be uh, looking at free agency. And uh, certainly, you know, as free agency is winding down, there's – could be some situations out there that are very, uh, you know, appealing to us. So we'll look at that. But obviously the main focus will be really rolling up our sleeves. You'll see that we're going to start having players, uh, visits, Dallas days, all the things that we do to pre prepare for the draft. So that'll be, you know, that'll be our main focus. Was there any? One or two more. Was there any? any he ready to go. Ragnar and, and how did that, those conversations go? Yeah. Another uh, hard obviously question. Obviously Dan's had a history with Bobby. Bobby uh, knows him well, but, uh, you know, it was just uh, one of those situations where, uh, you know, you, you look into it. Uh, he's a great, great football player, Hall of Fame type football player. And, uh, you know, just uh, as it turned out, we, uh, it, you know, it didn't work out with us. Steven, question that's less relevant to y'all right now, but Marcel is So he just beat around it. Didn't even act. Look, he's, he's brilliant. He's brilliant in beating around the question and just moving on from it real quickly. Um, of course, we all know Bobby Wagner is a great player, good player, good good situation for the Cowboys. But $11 million, we're giving that to Schultz, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Let's listen to more. A lot of teams need to match their quarterbacks to their systems right now as there are all these trades are going on. When you've been looking for personnel through the years, what's been the key to matching the quarterback in the system and ensuring that's a smooth transition? Well, I think you match your quarterback to your system once you – I mean, that, that's done when you have your guy and you start to see that's who it is. Then if you got a great head coach and a great coordinator, then they start to say, hey, what are, you know, it was Tony, now it's Dak. Yeah. What, what does Dak do well? And then if you've got a great coordinator and a head coach or offensive minded, then they start to say, hey, with our personnel, with our offensive line, with Zeke, with the receivers we have, and then ultimately the most important one is Dak, what, how do we design an offensive system that best suits him? All right, so that was the end of that interview there. Um, what best suits Dak Prescott? <laughs> the answer I already gave many of episodes ago, Dak is 30-0 and 0 when they run the ball more than they pass the ball, right? When they run the rock, and I believe when the 
running back hits 25 to 26 carries, even if it's a combination, the Cowboys are undefeated. That's the answer to the test. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. Uh, shout out to Charlie. He says, uh, yeah, the last five uh, Super Bowl teams that won the Super Bowl, the last five teams that won the Super Bowl all made big acquisitions during the free agency. Uh, go back even further, the last 10 teams. Uh, go back to the go back to that aspect of it. Sign Treader, this trip aces. Yeah, go sign Treader. I, I'm very high on Treader, J.C. Treader. I know it's a long tooth, but, man, let that tooth, use that tooth to solidify, to the solidify this offensive line. Appreciate everybody for uh, tuning in. Um, Law, you know Jay Lou changed his number to two. I didn't know that. <laughs> Jordan Lewis changed his number to two. Appreciate you, man. You know, I, I definitely didn't know that. And since you brought it up. <laughs> we got breaking news. Jordan Lewis changed his number to two. According to Javion Jones with the breaking news of the top of the hour, Jordan Lewis will now be number two. I can't wait to see him out there on the field. We'll have more news at four. <laughs> Who else changed their number? <laughs> Shout out to you, Javion. Uh, that's, that's good information there, by the way. You know, PTSD Frederick is uh, who is 31. I don't know. Uh, trip aces. I don't know. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, appreciate you, uh, Crystal. Thank you so much for jumping in and being part of this episode as well, Cowboy Nation. It took me long enough to get through this one. Uh, appreciate you guys. Um, hopefully next week we will start back up the final word. Uh, my guy, Boss Cowboy, he's working on that, that draft uh, book, and it's going to be nice, man. It's going to be a lot of eyeballs to film that, that they didn't did, him and the O.C., they had remarkable uh, film study guy last year and the year before that. So uh, they got this thing going. Shout out to Amazon and everybody else that, that pushes that product out. And I can't wait to get my hands on the draft guide. Uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in. Took Zerlon number. Yeah, Zerlon number. Yeah, Brian Bradford, he did. Uh, idiot going to change his number every year. Yeah, and he got to pay for it, though. He got to pay for it. That's crazy as the thing of it all, right? But it is what it is. He got big money. He do. He do. Uh, Cowboy Nation, really appreciate y'all. One love, baby. Be sure to hit that like button, share this content. We will have a draft party on the 27th, I believe, whatever the draft day is next month. We will have the draft party. Stay tuned, Cowboy Nation. Also, we'll be doing the Michael Irvin jersey giveaway for those who donated. And for those who are part of the membership squad, appreciate y'all on both platforms, whether it be Patreon, Facebook, YouTube. And on top of that, if you join the Halftime app, the link is in the description box. Your name is automatically entered in, so you don't have to give no remunerations. Uh, nobody's buying Jordan Lewis jersey law. Yeah, he, had to buy, he didn't have to buy out that many jerseys. Yeah, I, I didn't think about that, Chris. <laughs> You're right. Verde, appreciate you. Shout out time. Don't forget to put down where you guys are from. I can't wait. I can't wait to read that. Cowboy Nation. This goes back to how we open up this thing. If the Jones family really think less is more, let's play this right quick. Now, see, the cocaine's happening. When does that crack come into play for you? <laughs> I can't make this stuff up, baby. But less is more. Less is more. Come on, baby. Yeah, come on. Ain't no party like a cowboy party. Yeah. Shout out to Memphis, 10 K. Yeah. Jay Lombardi, Lawrence, appreciate you. Shout out to you, Charlie. Thank you. El Paso in the house. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate you. Much love. One love to everybody. Thank those who donated. Appreciate those who shared this content. I really do appreciate each and every last one of you. Iceberg Q. Appreciate you, man. My brother from another mother. No other. Maryland in the house. Birdie, I didn't know you was from Maryland. Shout out to all of the Maryland Cowboys. That's what they say, man. They say those are real diehard Cowboy fans in Maryland. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Come on. 
Where my Mississippi love at, baby? Shout out to your money out of the you know what. Appreciate you. I can't say the word because they, they, they flag it, but I, I, I know who you are, money out of the you know what. <laughs> Hardy, Arkansas. Appreciate you. Austin, Texas in the house. Arizona. The Zone Boys. Shout out to you, Daryl. Maybe we'll do a call-in show. I can't wait to hear your passion, your desire, the love and adulation you have for the nation. Come on. Let's go. North Carolina in the house. Shout out to y'all, man. M-O-D-A. I can do that. D-A in the house. What's good? Shout out to you, Canada. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Frederick, Maryland. Appreciate you. 314. That's how we get down, baby. Shout out to y'all. Turn me up. M-O-D-A. Come on. Let's slow it down. 310, keeping it mean. I see you. Let's go. East Texas need a shout out. I feel you. M-O-D-A. Columbia, Maryland. Fresno in the house. Shout out to you. Appreciate y'all. Roger, Brian Brown. Thank y'all. We up out of here. Jerry. Happy birthday to all for this month and next month. Got you, man. You know my hooked on funny speech. <laughs> I got you, man. Blessings to all. Shout out to Hook on Fun.